Let's imagine we have a circle with two chords that intersect at a right angle. Point P is where these two chords cross, dividing them into four segments. The lengths of three of those segments are given. We're asked to find the radius of the circle. Now there's a beautiful relationship between the radius of a circle and two perpendicular chords. First, let's erase the values of the segment lengths and assign variables to each of them, x, y, z, and t. In this situation, 4 r squared is equal to the sum of x squared, y squared, z squared, and t squared. There are some theorems that are just visually pleasing. You wonder where they come from. That's why I wanted to share this one with you when I saw it. Of course, there's no need to memorize such a theorem. I mean, how many times in your life are you really going to encounter perpendicular chords? Instead, today we'll prove this theorem. And through this proof, we'll learn some other important things as well. So let's get started. Here's a very important piece of information. A perpendicular drawn from the center of a circle to a chord always bisects the chord. So if the length of chord BD is y plus z, then the right side becomes y plus z over 2, and the other small piece becomes z minus y over 2, right? Similarly, if we drop a perpendicular from the center to chord AC, the upper part becomes x plus t over 2. If we connect point A to the center O, that gives us a radius. And now, notice we've formed a right triangle. The square of x plus t over 2 plus the square of z minus y over 2 equals r squared. If you expand this, you get an equation that looks pretty complicated at first glance, right? But take a look at those yellow and green chords on the circle. Point P divides them into four parts. And there's also a known relationship between them. The product of the two green parts equals the product of the two yellow parts. We've already proven this before. You can find the proof in the video at the top right. So if x times t equals y times z, then that part of the equation becomes zero. If you move the four to the other side, you get back to the equation we started with. Now let's go back and try solving the problem from the beginning of the video. First, let's assign t to the length of pc. That gives us 22, t equals 4 times 44, so t equals 8. If you now plug everything into the theorem, you'll find that r equals 25. When you think about it, this equation almost feels like a formula that includes two Pythagorean theorems, doesn't it? And the result gives you the square of the diameter. Since it looks so similar, there must be a connection. We can actually prove this relationship another way, too. Since point P is inside the circle, we can apply the inscribed angle theorem. The angle at P is half the sum of the arcs it sees. That means the arcs AD and BC must always add up to 180 degrees, because the angle at P is 90 degrees. So if we somehow connect these two arcs, starting from point D, together they form a semicircle. And if we connect points O and J, we get the diameter AJ. Now if we also connect points A to D and D to J, we form an inscribed angle that subtends the diameter. That means angle D is a right angle. If you now apply the Pythagorean theorem in this yellow-red triangle, you're essentially proving the equation we started with. Yes, it's truly beautiful when a theorem has multiple proofs. Everything starts to fit together neatly. And actually, you could reach the same result using coordinate geometry or vector methods as well. If you have a different idea, feel free to share it in the comments. All right, I hope everything was clear. See you in the next lesson.